Okay, so this is my little video tutorial. I have an old radio here and wanted to add an MP3 jack or an external audio source. I don't have any cassette tapes anymore and don't have any need for them. So what I did, I took the cassette head feed, which is going to have three wires. One of them will be your common ground. The other two are going to usually be colored or red and white, they're the smaller ones. I took an old headphone plug and ran it through the speaker port casing. And you strip those off. They have two little painted wires. You're going to twist the two bare wires together and use as a common ground. Then you'll have two others, usually either red and blue or red and green. Those are going to be separate left and right channel, which you will then hook to the left and right channel of the tape deck feed. You do need to have a switch. If your radio has a switch that also doubles as the off position for your tape deck, what you do is disconnect the tape deck motor. It's going to have two wires going to it. Just disconnect those and make sure they are not going to touch each other. It's going to have two other wires, usually two other colors. On mine, they are orange and yellow and they go to a little switch which is activated when you push the play button. That is actually going to turn on and off the audio feed. You want that because otherwise when you turn your radio off you're going to have a good bit of noise. So basically when you plug in the mp3 player and push play and you will use it at a very low volume so it's going to save some battery on that. Uh, when you plug in the mp3 player you push the play button on the existing tape deck or you can add an extra switch. Myself, I just decided to use the play button on the tape deck and disconnect the motor. And that will give you an audio feed to your radio. That way you can use an external radio source. Okay, and here is a shot of it actually working. See, I have the MP3 player plugged in. Radio is still disconnected. You want your volume very low. And you are simply going to... These are the wires that will go to your tape deck switch, if you can see those. When you touch them together, it activates the feed from the tape deck head. I'm going to actually put the camera down and twist those together because I don't have a tripod with me. Now typically, once again, those are going to be switched on and off by the play button on the tape deck. So we are playing at a very low volume, and here is our volume control on our radio. As you see, down in the I now down have complete... In the I now have complete control of the radio and the mp3 player. Switch songs and there you go. There you have it. You actually want to keep the volume on your radio fairly low and you can control the overall volume from your mp3 player. Turn up the feed and it turns up the volume on the radio. There you go. Alright, thank you for watching. You know, it's a little intimidating, but if you have a cheap radio and a cheap pair of headphones, you can easily accomplish this yourself. It's very basic stuff, of course. You know, just a little disclaimer, you really shouldn't have it plugged into the wall while doing this, but I just had it plugged in for the sake of testing, and I pretty much know what to and not to touch. Alright, thank you, have fun. Okay, and here's the radio all put back together. Of course, right now we are on radio mode. Um, once again, you know, you kind of want to turn it down quite a bit before switching so you know there's the volume pretty much all the way down I'm gonna switch it over to tape a little bit of a blip um, have my cell phone playing mp3s going through this little feed wire that comes out through the speaker portal and so what I will do is I will actually I found out the play button will not lock in place when the motors not hooked up so don't want to actually use that. 
Uh, yeah, I mean you can like push it and it doesn't hold down. You can actually use the fast forward or rewind button either way. They will lock. And that is the MP3 feed. Basically what I've done is just turned the tape head feed from the tape player into an external audio source using the existing switch in the tape deck instead of putting an external switch. I didn't want to have to drill in for the switch. And my cell phone is actually sitting at the lowest volume possible. Of course, you're going to have a little static if you have any wires touching on your audio source. You don't want to do that, but, you know, it is what it is. It was a quick throw-together project. All right, uh, go try it yourself.